to listen. In this lesson, we'll, looking, we'll be looking at um, different verb forms, that will be a revision from syntax 1, and we'll learn about different kinds of clauses. So, um, um, what we're going to look at is, uh, last lesson we uh, talked about functions and realizations, and we said um, um, phrases are realizations which have a particular function in a clause. So we have something which functions as a subject, is realized by a noun phrase. Um, what we didn't talk about then was um, that certain parts of a sentence um, are realized by clauses and, and um, how we can label these clauses. That's what we're going to look at today. But before we do that, I'd like to um, talk about for a little talk talk for a little bit about um, the predicate and how you can uh, label the different kinds of verbs. And of course, this is just repetition from syntax one. Now look at this this sentence here. Every single one of you should have signed the paper. The predicator here is should have signed. What I'd like you to do is pause this video and uh, try and label all the different verbs in that predicator. Should have signed. It's three verbs. Now which verb in this predicator is finite? It should. As you know, the first verb in the predicator always is finite. The finite verb is a verb that can change its tense. You can change should to shall. Every single one of you shall have signed the paper, which changes the grammatical tense of the sentence, doesn't it? So should here is finite. Now, as a rule of thumb, you can always remember the first verb, or if it's the only verb in the predicator, is always finite. Should here is the finite verb, and it's uh, a modal auxiliary. It's an auxiliary, it's not primary, but it's modal. We'll talk about that, that later. The non-finite verbs in this predicator are have and sign. Remember, non-finite verbs are verbs that cannot change their tense. You can't, you can't change have to had. You can't say should had signed. And you can't do, the, do that with signed either. You can't change it to sign or something. Have here is non-finite, it's a primary auxiliary, remember, do, have, and be are the primary auxiliaries. And um, the form is infinitive, it's the infinitive form. So infinitive is the, the whole verb, the dictionary form, you could also say. Signed is also non-finite, and it's a lexical verb. Very often lexical verbs are the kinds of verbs that you can... You can draw. You can draw a picture of someone signing a piece of paper. Very often that's the case for lexical verbs. So these are verbs that have very obvious meaning. And in this case, signed is a past participle form, or ed participle. Remember, we have a present participle, being participle, and past participle, ed participle. Kinds of verbs, um, we can classify our verbs as either finite or non-finite. Finite verbs can change their tense. Non-finite verbs cannot change their tense. When they're non-finite, they always are either ing form, present participle, ed form, past participle, ed participle, because when it's irregular, it doesn't have ed, but it's still a past participle. Um, and non-finite forms, verbs can also be infinitive form, like the verb have. Yeah, so that's the form you'll find in a dictionary when you look them up. Now, these verbs are either lexical or auxiliary. Um, and those of you who remember uh, syntax one, um, we'll start to think about um, uh, the copula, whereas the copula here in the list that will come later, because the um, book we use for this course um, groups the copula under lexical verbs. So that comes later. So 
Um, we'll say lexical uh, verbs are either lexical or auxiliary verbs. Remember, lexical verbs are the uh, uh, verbs that have very obvious meaning. Um, mo in most cases, not always. And auxiliary verbs are helping verbs. So a verb is either auxiliary or lexical. Now, um, as a rule of thumb, you can say um, if there's more than one verb in the sentence, every verb except the last one, if there's more than one verb in a predicator, I should say, if there's more than one verb in a predicator, every verb except for the last one is an auxiliary verb, a helping verb. They help the main verb to describe itself, to express itself. When a verb is auxiliary, it's either primary or modal. When it's primary, it's do, have, and be, all the others are modal verbs. Right, so um, um, then we're left with lexical verbs. We have different kinds of lexical verbs. Lexical verbs are either intransitive or transitive or, in this case, um, copula. Now, I know last year we, did, we said copula was different from lexical verbs, but in this, um, in this course we say, um, because that's the approach the book takes, um, copula verbs are part of, uh, belong to the group of lexical verbs. So a copula verb is a kind of lexical verb. So when a verb is lexical, it's either intransitive, transitive, or copula. Now, intransitive, you remember, um, means that nothing is um, nothing is, as it were, transferred through the verb. There's no object. There's no direct object or indirect object or whatever. So Sarah was laughing. Sarah here is a subject. Was laughing is a predicator, and so um, there's no direct object. So laughing here is a lexical verb, which got to be. Um, intransitive, because there's no object. Then some verbs are transitive, which means there is an object. Something is transferred, as it were, through the lexical verb to the object. Uh, Jack loves cats, for example. Jack loves cats. Jack is subject, loves is predicator. Jack loves what? He loves cats. So cats is the direct object. Which means this verb is monotransitive. Love is monotransitive because there's only one object. Mono means one. Ditransitive verbs are verbs like gave, for example. Give. I gave our cat to Jack. Here we have a direct object. I gave what? Our cat. And an indirect object. To whom? To Jack. So when there's two objects in the sentence, a direct object and an indirect object, we say the main verb is uh, ditransitive. Di means two. Some verbs are complex transitive, as in the sentence, I made Jack happy. Now, these sentences are always slightly complicated because it's easy to get confused about this. I is subject, made is predicator, and then you, you always start to wonder, what did I make? Did I make Jack? Or did I make happy? Well, the key is, um, happy really says something about Jack, doesn't it? You can put an equal sign between Jack and happy. Jack is happy because of what I did. Um, so here we say, Jack is a direct object. I made Jack, even though that sounds a bit funny, because of course I didn't make him, um, but I made him something. But I made Jack, that's a direct object, and I made him what? I made him happy. Happy here is the attribute of Jack, is an attribute. It's the object attribute. It's an attribute of the object. So I made Jack, direct object, happy, object, attribute. Now, when there's an object attribute in the sentence, it, the verb is complex transitive. So make here is a complex transitive verb. 
Then finally, um, some lexical verbs are copular or linking verb. And these are the kinds of verbs that can be replaced by an equal sign. I feel great now. Um, you can say I am great now. I equals great. Um, you can also say feel can be replaced by a verb by a form of to be. I am great now. Of course, that's not entirely similar, but you get the idea. Um, great says something about I. Great is an attribute of I. Great then is the subject attribute, not the object attribute, but the subject attribute. I feel great now. Um, so when there's a subject attribute in this in the sentence, we're dealing with a copula. So the verb here is a copula, a linking verb, feel. The, um, uh, uh, again, at the predicator and the different kinds of labels you can give to verbs, that was all just repetition from last year. Um, now let's look at this sentence and um, uh, uh, try and analyze it. So pause this video um, for a moment and analyze this sentence. Right, so here it is. I did not like our cat because it was nasty. I is a subject realized by a noun phrase. Did is a predicator realized by a verb phrase. Um, an actual fact, did like is the predicator, um, realized by a verb phrase. So did like really belongs together, even though you can't really see that um, on this slide. Uh, but not is an adverbial, <coughs> which is sort of crept in between did and like. So not is an adverbial realized by an adverb phrase. A cat is a direct object realized by a noun phrase. And then finally, we're left with because it was nasty, uh, which is an adverbial, realized by um, a clause. Remember what I said earlier um, in a previous lesson. Uh, when it's a clause, there's a predicator in the sentence. Or there's a predicator in the constituent, sorry. Because it was nasty is a constituent, it's an adverbial. Why did I not like it? Because it was nasty. Now, when it answers the question why it's an adverbial, in this adverbial, we have another predicator, was. This adverbial functions as a kind of sentence within the bigger sentence, because it was nasty. And last time we said this kind of constituent is what we call a subordinate clause or a subclause or a dependent clause. So um, we can say this is an adverbial which which functions as a clause. But then this clause is a particular type of clause. As I said at the beginning, in this lesson, we'd like to look at the different labels we can give to clauses. Now, in order to do that, we need to remember what we just talked about, the different kinds of verbs that appear in a sentence. Um, so if we look at the verb in this particular clause, was, um, we can see it's finite. This is a finite verb. Was can be changed to is because it is nasty. That's fine. It makes sense. So was is finite also because it's the only verb in the sentence, so it's got to be a finite. Um, so we say this is a finite clause because it was nasty, is a finite clause. You can abbreviate that by FC. So next time when you analyze a sentence and there's a clause in the sentence and it's finite, you can say, in this case, adverbial, realized by finite clause or FC. Now here is another sentence. Take some time to analyze it. And here are the answers. I want to John to give him our cat. I is subject, realized by a noun phrase. Um, went is predicator, realized by a verb phrase. To John is the adverbial, realized by a preposition phrase. And 
to give him a cat is an adverbial to, realized again by a clause. Now, I said we need to label these clauses, um, but obviously this one is different from the previous one because um, it was nasty. To give him a cat um, is different. Maybe you should take some time, pause this video and take some time to think about why is this clause different? How is it different from the previous one? Now you might have noticed um, that it's different because, um, first of all, the clause itself doesn't have a subject. The previous clause had a subject, it, because it was nasty. This one doesn't have a subject. To give him a cat, there's no subject. Also, you might be surprised to find there's no finite verb. To give is not finite. Because it, um, you can't change it. You can't say to gave or gave. And as I said, as a rule of thumb, anything, any verb that's uh, in a two-infinitive form has to be non-finite. So this clause is a predicator, but the only verb in the predicator is a non-finite verb. Now, um, you might be um, thinking of what I said earlier, that every, um, that every sentence has got to have at least one finite verb, and that's still true in... Um, that's still true for independent clauses. So not necessarily, um, maybe I shouldn't have said sentences, um, uh, every independent clause, every main clause, has got to be, it's got to have one finite verb. Otherwise it can't stand on its own. It can't function by itself. So this is a subclause which is non-finite because it's got a two-infinitive verb form is as follows. It's an adverbial realized by a non-finite to infinitive clause, abbreviated NF to inf CL. Then finally, um, look, at an look at another sentence. I really love giving cats away. Again, Try and analyze the sentence, and maybe you can already take some time to um, uh, look at the uh, clause it contains and, what, and think about what kind of clause that would be. Here are the answers. I really love giving cats away. I subject realized by noun phrase, really is adverbial realized by adverb phrase, love is predicated realized by verb phrase, and um, giving cats away again as a clause. Now, as you can see, this clause is also non-finite. There's no finite verb. The only verb in the clause is uh, an ing form, giving. Also, a non-finite clause, it's a non-finite present participle or ing participle clause. So next time you analyze this kind of sentence, you say, um, the direct object here is realized by a non-finite present participle clause. Right, so to sum up, we can say we have three different kinds of clauses. Some clauses are finite. I didn't like our cat because it was nasty, because it's a finite verb was here. Some clauses are non-finite, to infinitive. I went to John to give him our cat. Non-finite, to infinitive clause. Non-finite present participle clauses are clauses like, I really like, giving cats away. Um, so when a clause starts with an ing form or a to infinitive form, you know it's non-finite. It's either a non-finite to infinitive form or a non-finite ing participle form. This is it for um, uh, this lesson. Uh, please revise the material that um, uh, uh, and study the material that um, uh, that's in the book, and um, uh, you'll you'll be able to find the relevant chapters on uh, the course outline on that school.